start coming down on Saturday, don't you? Show us the weekend before last. Yeah, the two. We had one in Buxton and then one in Manchester. And uh, the one in Buxton was Jack Massey. So I like entering in going for his first title, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a step up for Jack. Um, obviously, he lives in Chapel in the Frith, which is uh, out of town, and he's been selling okay in Manchester. And we, we took a gamble really going to Buxton, which is five minutes from his home, and the gamble paid off because uh, Jack, yeah, Jack um, sold the place out, and you know it meant we could put some lads on underneath who were not really ticket sellers um, to get them out, and uh, it worked. And you know we'll be doing it. At least twice a year ne next year and, and see where it goes from the there. noise on that night in there because of the dome i mean i think he sold almost 700 tickets himself personally and uh, it just it blew the roof off didn't it oh it was a fantastic <laughs> you know what probably out of the 700 that, that jack sold 550 had probably never been to boxing before, mm -hmm. so we've had some great feedback from them, and um, they all want us to know when, when we're going back there now. From the boxing point of view, you know, Jack fought for a WBC Youth World Title, which is a, a genuine title, mm -hmm. and he did really well. You know, uh, shame that the, the lads kind of, uh, I don't know, if he, 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 he quit or, 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 or not, but. You no, know, uh, I think a knockout was coming, and, and it was the easy way out. So uh, it wasn't the perfect finish it was looking for, but you know it, it was still an exciting fight while it lasted. So everyone who went enjoyed it, and, and they'd be coming back. And as I say, the bonus from my point of view is that a few people who can't sell tickets will, will be able to get out on, on, under Jack. So uh, that, that's good. And that, and that night there, we. we um, and new signing Max Hughes, who's a very good fighter, yeah. done me a favour sparring Teddy Flanagan. Um, got him a win. Um, he's coming off a loss, so uh, he needed that. So he, he shook some ring rust off, looked very good doing it. And, uh, Did he that a, a, a dull season? Yeah, he comes to have a fight, and that, that's what you need when you're at the he's level. He's winning one won his last three fights. Yeah, at the, the level of Max is, he's got to fight decent opposition, and he, yeah. he was, and um, it, it was good for him. So, you know, we, if a big fight comes up for him, we're ready to take it. If not, we, you know, we'll, we'll just keep uh, building him back up on the VIP shows. Callum DF was hoping to do a six round, his opponent changed to, to, to a four on the night, which was disappointing because he's ready to step up now. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, I'm looking for something for him, whether it again, got to go on the road and, and take a challenge or, or fight on one of my shows or something. Um, that, that's something we're going to fix very quickly. Well, he was a real class amateur, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. You know, a big slice yeah, of Joe yeah. Murray when Joe, you know, was mm -hmm. uh, the most talked about amateur in the country. So um, he's not a mug, Callum, so we, we, we've got him progressing quickly now. Jake Bulger had a good winner. Jake right? Bulger, you know, he was your, he, he was your Mr. Alive or Christian Light, but you know, you still got a lot good against him, and he did. So uh, he, he's working progress. He only had a few, a few fights. And then Charlie Schofield. Um, Looking really good at light, anyway. Unbelievable. He's fighting at 14 stone, and we said 13, he come in at 12 stone 8. So, you know, he, he's proved that, you know, he, he can do light heavyweight and the size of him and his jab it, it'd be hard to beat to Charlie you know and keep his strength um, you know he, he could be a bit of a dark horse for us definitely at light heavyweight yeah so yeah that, that, that show went, went as, as close to perfect as you can with boxing you know uh, nothing ever runs perfect but it, it did do well yeah and then you had the show afterwards at Victoria Warehouse the next day yeah the next day you know that was um, a funny one really because Jack Armfield v Chalorenda was the, the main yeah. event and a lot of people were coming for that and then so the car crash. Yeah, the car crash, so that kind of uh, put the mockers on that and he didn't give us long but we had, we had to fly someone in for Jack and do mm -hmm. one of the uh, international challenge belts because uh, there's no one in the country who's going to step in a day's notice and fight Jack over 10 rounds yeah. and eliminate us. So, uh, but hopefully that is going to be rescheduled for early next year, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, I booked Blackpool for December the 12th, which we'll speak about later. I was hoping to get um, Chella for that, but uh, he booked an holiday on the, on, the, on the strength that he was going to be fighting then, mm -hmm. and then away. So, um, can't do it for that one. But, no, but it's worth waiting for that fight. Yeah, yeah, everyone wants to see that, including me. So, mm -hmm. 
you know, we'll, we'll get that on as soon as we possibly can. But, you know, Jack's had problems in the past where he's not been fighting regular and we've got to overcome that. So we've got to keep him out. So he'll be out December, December the 12th. But, you know, he had a good tough test. The kid wasn't technically great, but it was, it was tough and he kept coming. And I think he needed that eight, eight rounds, yeah, you know, just to... Just to uh, to get him ready for the Chiller end of fight anyway, so it might have been a blessing in disguise. So um, right. it was okay with that. Ryan Dahl was chief support, and Ryan's obviously got a big fight on the 21st of November. He's fighting mm. another VIP lad, Isaac Lowe. And um, I mean, that, that, that's a fight that I really wish I didn't manage them both because uh, it's going to be mad watching that because it's going to be a great, great fight. Yeah. Um, but it's a fight that they, they, they both deserve and they both need it's an English title so it's a genuine bell and you know the winner's going to be pushing for the British and if you're going to go and fight the likes of Ryan Walsh you've got to have hard fights and you've got to learn before you go into them so it'd be a good fight for both of them whoever loses obviously uh, will be disappointed but we'll, we'll bring them back so uh, you know um, going back to that show oh he had the world on his shoulders because yeah, he I, I thought cut, it was a know. fantastic performance because of this pressure of having this English title fight down in front of him. It was, you know what I mean, we spoke about maybe him, him, him pulling out, um, but he wasn't he wasn't on for that, he wanted to fight and he did and he did well in the box well because yeah. you know he Very can controlled. he can be um should we say over eager to get stoppages, so um he wasn't and, and that pursuit was a mature performance and mm. you know it'll do him well for for when he fights Isaac because Isaac's uh, Matured unbelievably over the last like yeah, 12 months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. different character now than to, to what Plus, before. I think where he is now, you know, with the sparring with Josh and, and uh, Max Hughes is training with him now as well down there, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's very top, fortunate top in that. But when you say he's fortunate, he's, he's given up his home, you know, That's he's true, moved yeah. away and yeah. gone living um, in, a, in, a, in a caravan, I think, down there. So uh, I'm saying he's, he's matured and he's shown he wants it. So. Um, you know, you, you've got to give him credit for that. You know, a lot of people don't want to move. They, you know what I mean? He doesn't. He's give up his job and everything like that. So yeah. he's, he, he's he's doing it the Don't right way. Up in the morning, doing his runs, like I say, following on Facebook. Yeah. He's, he's doing everything that you need to do, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then made the, the standout performer the nice was uh, Tommy Tafen who um, mm -hmm. got a stoppage win against uh, Car Wild. Car Wild and uh, he. He was very, very controlled. We, we know he's powerful. We know he can fight a little bit, um, but he put in a, um, a mature performance, which means you know we can look at stepping Tommy up as well now. Yeah. Um, he was very, very controlled, and obviously his power was too much for Carl. Well, he does have problems with his hands, hasn't he? That's kept him a little bit inactive, but he uh, comes through that with flying colours. Yeah, no he, damage, was, no he was fine. Yeah, then uh, no, quickly running through them. Um, Morgan Jackson had a uh, spoiler with him, but again, he's only a young kid and uh, I think he's 20 now, so yeah. uh, he, he was in a learning fight. And you know, the, the, the spoilers, you don't want to fight and people don't want to watch him, but you've got to learn against them because mm -hmm. it's not just a question of, uh, you know, them spoiling you. The time later on in, in his life is going to be in a hard fight and he might want to spoil the fight for a little bit while he gets a breather back, so mm -hmm. uh, he can learn from that. Adam Michael had a good fight against Luke Callan, who's not not a bad um, Yeah, we were watching him out the week before with uh, Dale Coyle, wasn't it? That's the one, yeah. You know, so he's half decent him, and mm -hmm. probably a bit of a tougher fight than he wanted on, on, on his comeback. But um, and Adam showed his medal and uh, not fought for a long time, not been in the ring, and I only got told after he'd been struggling with his bar and only done four rounds. So it was a it was a good performance by uh, Adam as well. And then we had the three kids who weren't with VIP. Um, Chris Conwell, yeah, maybe five of the night with, yeah. with Chris Hathaway, just a shame it was only four rounds because mm. uh, it, it, it was a good fight and he just nicked it by a point. You know, if, any, if anyone had said like a draw, fair enough, we could have lived with that. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, over six rounds, that would be a belt. I think Chris started a bit slow, didn't he? And, uh, sorry, our Chris started a bit slow. And yeah. He like, like, took those first couple of rounds, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Um, 
may, maybe the second was a draw and mm. they won the third big and then the, the, the fourth could, could have gone either way but I'm going with Chris on that as well so I think the, the one part was there but they could learn it back Chris yeah. Coleman because if you go around behind after four rounds you've got to win all of the three mm. so um, and he's never lost a round before that Right, well, he's been <laughs> undermatched, hasn't he? So he's had, to, he's had to learn, but yeah, it was a good learning fight for Chris Conway. He enjoyed it. Kremner as well, I mean, he Fantastic. was asking to fight, um, oh, I forget his name, now, Taz Asperges, yeah. and that fell through him. So Mike Marsden phoned me up and said, Will you put your lad Danny Little in with him? And uh, we, we, we did do, and uh, Danny was impressed with him, and was. I was impressed because when Danny did catch him, he come back throwing a, a bundle of punches and I thought he might have tired himself out but uh, he's obviously trained hard to, 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 to throw in the volumes like that and you know people that I watch people like Andy Kremner he, he put a performance on you know uh, he used to be a showman with the uh, top hat but he come in without his top hat and was a showman in the ring this time so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll credit to Andy because he was an exciting fight to watch because uh, Danny doesn't roll over for anybody and um, and, and, and he uh, did, 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 did really well. And Luke Evans sold a load of tickets as well on yeah, his debut. Yeah, five performance um, against Matt Sierra. Yeah, Matt, Matt's a serial loser, but you know to do what he did against him, showing that uh, he's a decent kid. Listen, he hit. He did what boxing's all about. He hit, and he never got hit. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I was, I was smiling all the way through that fight. Yeah, when when I seen him afterwards, he wasn't even breathing as well. No, so. You know, he's, he's put it in and he's been, you know, for, for the kid who's never had a fight, he's been coming down here and sparring the likes of Tommy Coyle, so he, uh, you've got to give him his credit for that as well. Plus he's been helping get Masha ready for his fight on November the 7th. I didn't know that, he's yeah. been helping Masha, has yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So. Right, okie dokie. Right, Steve, um, November, you've got uh, quite a few shows coming up, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, there's only one VIP show, but I think we're going to be busy every single week. I mean, the 7th, which is coming up now, we've obviously got Masha Dodsby, um, mm -hmm. Scotty Cardle. Yeah, who's um, fooling who? Who's fooling who, yeah. I mean, it, you know, they, they, they say Rocky's uh, a big underdog in that, and, you know, uh, pe people are fancying Rocky, so, you know, is he an underdog? Um, <laughs> we'll find out on the night. I mean, Same. Cardell's obviously a big favourite against... Um, Masha, so, but you know what? The performance Masha put in last last minute notice Buckland. against Buckland mm -hmm. means you can't write him off, and uh, I'm looking forward to that because again we've nothing to lose on this. We're, we're big outside outsiders, but we've got a chance, and uh, he's done everything right in his sparring and and, and his training. He's a confident kid, mm -hmm. and against Buckland you've seen that he's got some chin. So if, if Cardell has took him likely, he could be a big big mistake. Well I don't think he will because he's, he's moved around with Anthony so Joe knows what he's about um, but he's going to have 12, I, I think he's going to have about 12,000, uh, 1200 fans there. Yeah he's, he's going <laughs> to have a lot plus the people who've already bought the tickets before he was added on to the bill will all, we'll all be supporting oh, the Masha because it, it's, it's a Cinderella story mm. and you know I was talking to someone today about it there and I've had lots of British champions but the majority of them you've expected to be British champions mm. whereas you know um, full respect to, 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 to Masha you know he'd say himself that you know when he come to sign for us and we was chatting away you know we never said right in less than 12 months we'll be fighting for the British title because we wasn't looking at those we wanted mm. to get his central area back and um, take it from there so you know you've got to say he's, 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 he's done good and hopefully he can do better than and win a British title on, on Saturday night and I'm sure the old Burke and Ed will be on standstill for 48 hours partying. Well let me put you on the spot not about Sean but about uh, Rocky and uh, Callum who? I got Callum Smith I, yeah. think, I, I just think um, technically he, he, he's so much better than, than Rocky. Rocky's obviously got puncher's chance, mm -hmm. but um, I, I can see um, the, 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 the great left hook he's got to the body being uh, the difference on that. Because obviously, if Rocky is going to win, he's going to have to get in tight and fire. And the silly thing is, we, we, with um, Callum, and I've seen him close when we put uh, Tobias Webham is that, you know, yeah, from a distance, last, last year, the size remember. and height of him, you think would be his best advantage, but it's not, he's actually very good at him fighting and mm -hmm. um, 
I, I, I can see a, a stoppage win for, 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 for Callum Smith on that one. But so he's a good match I'm not sitting the on the fence on that one. No. No. But it's a good match. It's it is a good it's match. Good yeah. It's and like, you know, we've got uh, Scott Quigg and uh, Frampton coming off in Manchester next year, haven't we? We have, you know, and that, that's a great fight as well. And I'm and, and not saying Rocky Field, I mean, Callum Smith's not a good fight, by the way. And, um, you know, probably want Rocky to win, but I don't think he will do. And it's the same with uh, Quigg. I'd love Quigg to beat uh, mm -hmm. Frampton, but I don't think he will do. Because uh, si since um, Fra Frampton, Last five, everyone didn't think Quigg had a chance, but I think he made the weight wrong on that one. Mm. And they're obviously both tight in the weight, and he might come down to who does the weight best for, for this fight because he's not mm. much in him. But the way I've been watching um, Scott, because I like Scott, not just as a kid but as a, as a boxer, he's been a pressure fighter, bullying kids who are smaller than him. Now, I know against Martinez, he didn't do that. But that first round, he looked awful on his back foot. He did. You know, so he's got to go forward. And I don't think he'd get a bully from um, Frampton. I think that's going to be uh, the difference. And if you look back when he did try to box with Jamie Arthur as well, he got put on his ass. And he's not a boxer. He was. But since he, he, his last probably eight fights, he's just been going forward and putting pressure on. And that that will, could be his own down, downfall with... Um, Frampton, but yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Right, so what's after that then? Ooh, on the big show. Come yeah, on. I'm on the big show there. We've got another couple of kids, uh, Ryan yeah. and Kai. Apparently, so, so I'm not allowed out after we fight Steve. <laughs> making well, his making debut. His debut isn't so I'm looking forward to that as well. He's finding a debutant that no one knows about, but he's not bothered, you know, and we had to get him matched. So uh, we've took that, and the, the reason we've took it, and I don't like taking debutants you don't know anything about. Is because he can fight. Yeah. You know, I don't worry about Ryan. kids who weren't that good, but you know, we don't have to worry about Ryan Bukai because he can fight. And I want him to make a statement on, on, on Saturday night because he's going to be in front of 10,000 people there. Yeah. And I don't want him fighting someone who's going to come and hold him and try and trip him up. I want someone who's going to try and win like this, this kid will do on his debut. And uh, that will make Ryan, Ryan shine. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. And also, Ian Household's going in the way um, against Mark Leach, which is a, a tough oh. answer for him, but um, you know, over eight rounds, I might have fancied him, but it's an hard fight for him over four, because Mark Leach is uh, very, very sharp and quick. Yeah. Right, and um, then we've got the show. Yeah, then we've got the Land Dudno on the 14th. Oh, sorry, that's your show, isn't it? Yeah, Land Dudno on the 14th, and you know, a bit like um, going out of town with. Um, Jack Massey and it working for us because it's sold out there. Um, we're going to Mark Evans, show, Mark Evans and a kid called Ryan Gibbs making his debut from Hollyhill, which is um, been sold 25 minutes away, so it's not right in the town. They're, 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 they're packing it out. Yeah. And everybody else who's on the show from Liverpool, I think they're all taking 100 tickets. And Tommy Callis has done 150, so we've got yeah. like Mark Evans. Andy Clue, he's fighting uh, Ryan Fields, which isn't a given. That's going to be a great fight. That's his first fight since his since his loss to David Barnes, yeah. So you know he's not coming back with an easy one, and he didn't want one. So fair play to him. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a great fight. Uh, Tommy Callis fighting that Chris Adaway, who comes to win yeah, as well. So uh, yeah. yeah, so that that's a good fight. And we have got Tobias Webb. Steve Brogan, Adi Ismail and Ryan Gibbs, so uh, that's, a, that's a, a good card that and it's going to be a sellout. so there's a few tickets left for the boxers, anybody watching wants a good night out in Land Dudno, it's right on the prom, so... Um, well, the first time boxing's been there for a while? First professional time boxing. Pro professional boxing has ever been there, yeah, they've had amateur shows but never had the pro shows there, so um, it's, uh, it's a new one for us. And then the week after we've got the, um, the big Anthony Crawler. For us two. Don't mm. ask me on that one because uh, I wouldn't be able to pick a winner on that one. I, I, I can't decide. But, no, um, no, well, I mean, I don't think we've seen the true Perez in that first fight until perhaps the last couple of rounds. So we'll have to see what he took. Uh, yeah, Anthony there's people Anthony saying that, they, that they, he'll come back a better fight, fight. But I think Anthony will be a, a better fight as well because he was straight after a long time out with a bad injury. A lot of pressure on him, he's done it before, 
Um, so I, I still see that as a 50-50 fight. I wouldn't, wouldn't like to pick a winner. All, all I would say is that hopefully uh, the unify with um, Teddy Flanagan <laughs> after that. So that that would be a uh, bonus. And ob obviously, uh, ho hopefully it, 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 it's Anthony. Um, and we could have a drink at Jolly Boys and get ready for the new year. So you know, that's a good top of the bill. A better fight for me is Isaac Lowe v Ryan Doyle, which we touched on before, and I won't speak much about that because they're both my kids. Then we've got Brian Rose. He's um, going for the belt at middleweight for the first time. Oh, really? So he's on there. Tommy Carl's just pulled off injured, so that, that's a shame. Phil Smith is stepping up and fighting Charlie Edwards. That would be a good fight. I'd ask for him, but he's more than capable of beating him, so um, that that'll be a good fight. And and Liam Taylor's just doing a six rounder, so we, you know we're busy on that show. And then um, the 28th, I'm just waiting for Eddie Earns to come back to me. We're hoping that um, well, you're trying to get Josh on this show. Josh Warrington's going to be on the Fury Klitschko, but it's not been confirmed. We're all sat here waiting to hear now. I mean, everyone's on the yeah. phone every day because he'll take a lot of people over there, but. They need to know he's on. I'm the same. I, I want a book to go over there and uh, take a few friends, but I'm, I'm just waiting on the, on, on the nod. So if that's the case, we'll be out every single weekend in uh, November. And December, we'll come back and talk about it, Lee. That's okay with you. But, you know, we, we, we've got three Jolly Boys going on, which is uh, Manchester, the 20th of December, we always do. 13th in Hull. But I believe they've got a bit soft in there. They want the girls to to come with them so that's not going to be proper jolly boys <laughs> but the scousers are like the bank so it's a proper jolly boys in in liverpool on the 6th of uh, december so we've got them and a big big show on the 12th of december in blackpool which uh, i'll give you details for shane, singleton's come back on that, isn't it? shane singleton's making his comeback on that one yeah so uh, he'll, he'll sell it after tickets we've got probably a 10 fight card and looking for two titles on the, on, on the top of the bill as well so um, that's in the winter gardens yeah that's in the winter gardens and i'm just waiting for frank warren to tell me uh, who they require on the uh, 19th of december if anyone from our stable who's contacted with frank so uh, ho hopefully we'll be getting the three lads on there unfortunately teddy's uh, not on that one because uh, he's feeling a little bit burnt out from his yeah. three hard camps and you know I can understand that because he works really hard and even though his last two have not lasted <laughs> long it's, it's, been, it's, been the, it's been the hard work he's been putting in the camp so he's had an holiday he's having another holiday and he'll be fresh to come back and uh, fight again and I'm, I'm Frank Shaw I think um, end of February March we've been told right exciting times then looking forward to next year as well but let's finish this year with a bang out Take care, Steve. Thanks very much, Lee. Bye. Bye.